I welcome you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and I welcome those who have joined us online at this time. And we're so thankful today for us to begin a new year of worship together. And so we're excited about that, and, and we're excited to be together on this day. Uh, we do want to uh, also uh, welcome those uh, that are new to St. Luke's and uh, know that if you live in our area, that we would love to be the place where you grow closer to God here at St. Luke's. And so you're always welcome here. Uh, today, as we've gathered, uh, this is a, uh, the first Sunday of the year. Uh, this is also uh, in the Christmas season, as we call it. So uh, this will be the last uh, day that you'll see the beautiful Christmas decor as we move into a new season. Uh, coming up with the season of Epiphany. So let's uh, join our hearts in prayer as we get ready on this day to celebrate our, our Lord and Savior. Thank you, God, for being with us today. We ask your continued blessing on our gathering. Also, Lord, for your protection, as well as your covering over us. Lord, in this Christmas season, we are just so aware of you being with us. And so, Lord, we thank you and we praise you and we ask your blessing over this time together. In the blessed name of Jesus, our Lord and living Savior, we pray. Amen. Good morning. And happy New Year. Let us hear our first prayer as we come to hear our Lord and Savior. Amen.
Can you all hear me okay? No? I sure. couldn't hear you either. I'm still cranking up a little. As we uh, join our hearts and our lives in prayer, uh, we'd like to uh, remember those that uh, are starting this new year uh, in search of new health. And so we want to uh, continue to pray for those that are struggling, whether it be uh, the virus, uh, whether it be um, some of the things that we normally have, which is the flu and the respiratory flus and things like that. Uh, we want to pray uh, over them. And uh, we also want to pray that we continue in the new year uh, to be able to praise and honor God. And, and so in all that we do, not just one day a week, but seven days a week, may our lives reflect uh, the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so uh, let's go to God in this time of prayer. Thank you, God, for the challenges of this new year. And we ask, Father, that you will continue to bless us uh, with many opportunities in this year to be able to praise your holy name. Lord, for many opportunities to witness for you. And we ask, Father, that you'll continue to watch out over our congregation as we reach out in mission and ministry. And we're thankful for the opportunity this week to give blood to help folks that need blood transfusions. Lord, thank you for that opportunity. We ask, Father, that you bless that you'll continue to bless us uh, in many ways as we reach out to those that are hungry in this coming year. Reach out to those who need clothing and reach out to those that have lost their employment and jobs. And so, Father, we praise you. We ask, Father, your blessing. Our church today, as we strike a path of ministry that would honor you. So, Lord, may this year be a great year of ministry. And we ask, Father, that you also help us to prepare ourselves physically for that. We ask your blessing of uh, peace and safety over those that maybe have had uh, issues with the virus. We ask that you'll continue to bless and guide and keep them and, and help them to return to full health so that they can, too, be a part of the mission and ministry that you have uniquely placed them on this earth for. And so, Father, we pray your guidance over that. Today, Father, we ask your blessing, uh, your, your blessing over the music, your blessing over the uh, ministry. Uh, today, we ask that you'll continue to watch out over us. And now, Lord, we pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We continue our worship and praise by singing hymn number 245, the first Noel. <laughs>
today, that is a perfect song. Because in that song, it kind of helps me to start to, to visit with you a little bit about our new sermon series. And I'm going to try something new. I've never done this before in 18 years of ministry. But what I want to do is a, is a series with you that helps us to understand where the uh, theology comes from, okay? Where the uh, songs and the music and what you just heard told us so far about how far God went with his love for us. Did you hear that in the words? Everybody, if, if you're awake, nod your head. If you're not, uh, we'll come and, and get the ambulance for you, okay? But honestly, the, the songs that we sing and the songs that have been throughout the ages, have that's what instructs us about what God's love is for us. And, and so I want to talk a little bit about that. Music's important. Uh, our action of worship is one of the reasons why God created us in the first place. Okay, so um, we're going to talk about in this series uh, how music is something that uh, helps to infuse our soul with how we can get closer with God. This time of year, we're used to seeing things like some uh, carolers. Have you ever ever noticed uh, the old uh, caroler tradition? Sometimes we have those little statues that have the old carolers and those are beautiful. Uh, it reminds us that this is a tradition that started several hundred years ago. But then we gather around and sometimes we'll even go to people's homes. Uh, now we do that six feet apart from the street, but that's what we have to do in a pandemic year. Where we go and we bless people with some carols and, and maybe uh, sing some songs in their front yard even. Uh, then you, you have some pretty big productions. We have the uh, Mormon Tabernacle Choir. Have anyone ever heard those, that small choir sing? Well, they, they do a really nice job and have a Christmas uh, special that we've really enjoyed on several occasions. And so uh, the, the, the choir, we, you know, you can have songs that are performed by many. Or you can have choirs that are, we have a, a, a great time as a choir, and here's an old picture of one of our Christmas uh, productions here at St. Luke's. And, and the, the music is what transmits the message. The music is what gives us uh, that theology or draws us closer to God. But the, here's the one I like the best. <laughs> When you have a whole bunch of, of small children that come together and they put together a Christmas play or a Christmas uh, and do the Christmas story and they sing those songs, it just melts my heart. Anybody here, am I the only one that likes that? Anybody here like that? I love to see the children sing. And if you're trying to help a child to remember something in Scripture, Guess what? They're going to remember it if they're able to sing it. That's the best way for us to recall uh, some of the great truths of what we're hearing uh, through the music that has been produced. So I'd like for us to think about how important that is. It's important when we come together for worship, what these guys do here for us is ama amazingly important, okay? Uh, with our praise band and, and with, with the music that you are singing, it's an important part. And, and I want to share with you why this music makes a difference in our life. Uh, because it's an emotional language. I mean, when you're singing a song, there are times... Uh, how many of you have ever sung the song, Old Ang Syne? Anybody? You know what I'm talking about? Does that bring some emotions up? And it's like, oh man, you know, every time you sing that song, it reminds me of, of New Year's Eve. Uh, it reminds me of, as sometimes, you know, when we, and it's emotional things that come up. And so we are emotional beings, uh, as well as spiritual beings and physical beings. 
but those emotions are part of the music. It, music also helps to strengthen uh, this bond of Christian love that we share together. You know, when, when we're able to sing, and hopefully soon, we'll be able to uh, have a mask burning. Anybody here want to do a mask burning? I know, hallelujah, but don't do it yet, okay? I'm just thinking one of these days that might be a great celebration. It's just get a pile of those and watch them burn. But at the same time, we realize they have a function, and I want you to wear them. Uh, it, it, but it, music, as we're able to sing together, even in, through a mask, it helps to bind us together. Even that song, Bind Us Together With Love, right? Uh, that's a wonderful way for us uh, to use music. Music is another way that we can heal from the inside out. You know, there's music therapists out there, and they, could, they can help through music to even take uh, troubled children and, and help them, you know, to be able to be calm in their soul. Uh, sometimes it, it helps a person even in a nursing a facility to remember that are having trouble with memory and music is a healing event so when we have music it's very healing music is something that can lead us to a place where we can have a life-changing experience with the Lord Jesus Christ you know it's not just the spoken word that speaks to us it is the sung word that is spoken to us and it helps us uh, to understand the importance of following Christ, the one that went so far for you and I, as the song today indicated. Music is something that helps us grow closer to God. Music is one of those things that helps us to uh, experience our faith in the living Lord. Uh, it is something that we need to be able to express our love back to God. So it's an active and a dynamic kind of part of our worship. Um, music is something that makes uh, opportunities for us to go out and witness to other people and call people into the life of Christ and, and, and help them to walk in discipleship. Music is, is uh, one that helps people uh, to, uh, to be able to be the witness they're called to be. Remember, in the United Methodist Church, we have five membership principles, and, and witness is one of those. So music is a great way for us to do that. Um, it's also an offering of praise and a gratitude that we have back to the living God. Music is, a, music is a sweet thing that God can hear. Now, does that mean you have to sing perfectly on key for music to uh, be something that honors God? Does it? No. Well, that, praise God for that, right? Okay. God hears the music from our soul level. Did you know that you can sing from your soul? In a few weeks, I'm going to teach you that song and what it really means to sing from our souls to the living God. But, you know, our souls can even sing. Did you know that music can even be without words? It can be something that helps us to connect ourselves to the living God. Music's important. So, um, it is the primary thing that helped form the Methodist doctrine. Uh, John Wesley and his brother Charles were an important part of developing Wesleyanism, okay, and the Wesleyan uh, faith. And, and Charles, uh, John's brother, wrote 6,500 hymns. And some of them are even hymns that we sing, and I'm going to introduce some of those to you again in, in a new way over these next few weeks. Uh, but this is an important part of who we are. Music is who we are as Methodists, okay? Uh, it's the best source that we have on this planet of Wesleyan Eucharistic doctrine, and this is 
a communion Sunday, and Eucharist is, is a way that we say thanks back to God for what God has done for us. And so even uh, John and Charles, they wrote 166 different hymns about communion, okay? And this uh, Lord's Supper, uh, even back in the mid-1700s, they were writing about this experience that we'll go through today. So I want you to know how important it is sitting here in a Methodist church and listening to a Methodist online broadcast that we are, uh, we are actually doing something today that has been sung about for several hundred years. And it was instigated a lot by Charles Wesley. We have a lot of traditions. And I think that we can safely say that we have had some Christmas traditions in the last few weeks. Uh, but some of those traditions, uh, the Christmas songs that we sing, are, are very traditional. And so you, you think about it, uh, Christmas carols have been around a long, long time, haven't they? So carols, it's a style of music. And believe it or not, it originated as a circular dance where you would get in a big circle, depending on how many people were singing, and you would move to the music. Carols were, were part of that. It was a part of the tradition when they were uh, being originally sung. And so um, they had to be sung outside. And this is after the Reformation. Uh, those carols had to not interfere with the high church music, okay? They were not looked at as something that could be performed inside the church. So um, Christmas carols also uh, th led us to a individual service where those then were incorporated at a different hour of the day. Vesper services were in the afternoon and they allowed Christmas carols to be sung then because it didn't interrupt the high church music. <laughs> so that's kind of the history uh, behind those carols. The most famous collections, there are several of them out there. Brit Britain uh, had the ceremony of carols uh, back in the 1940s, but then the, the, the one that we all know is the most famous of all, and that's Handel's Messiah and the Christmas portion of that. Uh, that was back in the day of the Wesleys, okay? So I think for us to think about the Christmas song traditions is an important thing. And so I wanted us today, since we're in the season of Christmas, in the 12 days of Christmas, right? So I wanted us to do three Christmas songs today. And so I want us to discover uh, those three songs. Uh, the first one's going to be I Heard the Bells. Second one, O Little Town of Bethlehem, which we sang a little bit of it a while ago. And I want us to dive a little deeper into Silent Night and learn some more history behind these songs. And so the very first one is I Heard the Bells. And so we're going to go ahead and learn a little bit about that. Henry became a Harvard professor 
of him that God is not dead, nor does he sleep. The Sunday school children of Longfellow's local church in Boston first sang this song during that year's Christmas celebration. I heard the bells on Christmas Day reminds us that no matter how deep our pain or sorrow, we are but a breath away from the sweet bells and singing of heaven. So we see how this beautiful uh, song has helped to inform us of how peace on earth became an important part of not only the culture, but of the music that was being sung around Christmas. And those bells, we think of a Christmas bell, uh, it is to help remind us. Uh, turn the gain down, which is the top left button, John, the gain. Turn that down a little bit. Thank you. So, A Little Town of Bethlehem is the second song I'd like to visit with you about. And, and in that um, beautiful song, uh, it, it has a great history, history that includes an Episcopalian pastor. All right? And so, uh, it was written by a guy, and he was six foot six inches. So, just add two inches to me. That's how tall this guy was. And he was, back in the mid-1860s, 1868 to be exact, uh, he was uh, one that their congregation came to the pastor and said, would you please write a song for our children so they could have a children's play? And so what happened with, with uh, Pastor Brooks is uh, he had this wonderful children's play that uh, they were putting on and they put a backdrop of Bethlehem up and it was in a church that he was pastoring there in Philadelphia. And so uh, he wrote a poem and he had traveled three years earlier in 1865 over to the Holy Lands and he had stood personally himself right there in Bethlehem and imagined just where the Christ child would have laid, and imagined how uh, that made a difference for him, because every time he would think about Bethlehem, he would think about, hey, that's where Jesus was born. And so uh, the poem that he wrote uh, was inspired by this Holy Land experience, and then he went to his church musician, and uh, the organist there, and he said, now, we need to set this poem to music. Well, that's not an easy, easy thing to do. Uh, sometimes when you give someone a poem, it doesn't always make sense to the musician, okay? And so uh, he had all sorts of trouble, and he was on a deadline. And so what happened was really strange, and I wanted to tell this story because on Christmas Eve, there was no song to this whole little town of Bethlehem yet. And so the organist went to bed that night with no idea what the song would sound like. And he was awoken, awakened, awakened, there we go. He was awakened uh, with the sound of angels in his mind and so he jumped out of bed and started writing down the music uh, that he was inspired by these, these angels that he had, had heard in his dream. And so he wrote it down, and the song then, as we know it, was sung first on Christmas Day, the very next morning. Now that's putting it together quick. The next morning at a, at a children's Sunday school program, uh, oh, little town of Bethlehem became a part of what we know today. So, you know, it's amazing to me, um, you know, how the song, Oh, Little Town of Bethlehem, uh, has made a difference. And we sang a little bit of it 
this morning because it puts us back in the Holy Land. And so some of those, some of those things that we sing about actually ties us back to the physical presence of Jesus coming on this earth. And we hear that in, in the tune and in the music that we just sang. The last one I wanted us to kind of dig a little deeper on is the story Silent Night. How many of you would say it is one of your favorites? So is Silent Night one of your favorites? Oh, good. That's why I picked it. All right. So we're, gonna, we're going to learn a little more right now about Silent Night. So as we conclude this morning and these three beautiful Christmas songs, I want you to think about something. I want you to think about what a silent night really meant. What it really meant when in Bethlehem, God's only son came to live on this earth with us to experience our life 
with us. God with us, Emmanuel. And so today, as, we, as we've discovered, music is a way for us to understand how we can connect with God, how we can be uh, in a place where there's peace. Because the only way, if you want peace, you want Jesus. If you want peace in your heart, and if you want peace in your life, you, you want to know the only Son of the living God. That's Jesus Christ. And so music does that for us. As we sing, may we soak in the, the heavenly message of peace on earth, goodwill to men. May we soak in the messages of how peace uh, can help us to live in harmony with each other with I Heard the Bells. May we soak in the message of how that night made a difference for us for all eternity. Let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you and I praise you for music. I thank you and praise you for the ways that through even these very few Christmas songs that we've dove into today, we ask, Father, that you'll help us to open our spiritual eyes, open our hearts, help us sing from our souls, and help us to experience what made a true difference in our life, and that is Jesus Christ. That is your plan of love to allow Jesus to be a part of this world. Lord, we thank you so much for it. We ask that you'll help anyone out there that's listening or uh, within the sound of my voice, both here and online, I ask, Father, that you will help to open ears, open hearts, open lives to a life-saving and life-changing experience with the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives forever, rules forever in our hearts, and is part of how we understand true peace every day of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.